What's up, pups? How you guys doing? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. I wanted to get a little bit serious today with you guys and talk about something that I think is really important to talk about, especially with the new presidential cabinet and just the overall changes that are going to be occurring in our government. So I wanted to briefly, this is not going to be brief, who am I joking? I wanted to talk about climate change with you guys because I feel like it's important to discuss and I feel like it's something that is definitely going to get pushed to the back burner. Time and time again, I can already see that it's going to be denied and denied and denied in our government and I think it's important to be educated on what climate change is as well as understand that it is something that is real. It's a real thing. So sit back and relax and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Okay, so when terrible things tend to happen on our planet, like terrorist attacks or massive natural disasters or storms, they're generally very much localized to the area that they're occurring in. They don't typically affect the entire planet. I mean, you can read about it online or you see the effects through the news on TV, but there's a feeling of indifference that comes with not being directly affected by something. And when that happens, people tend to ignore the problems or ignore what's going on because it's not actively affecting their lives. But climate change isn't one of those things. Climate change affects every single person that lives on this planet. No matter where you live, you are affected. You've been affected for years and years and years. You are being affected right now in this moment. For years to come, even after our generations, there will be effects of climate change unless we take necessary steps to try to reverse the damage that we've already done right now. So imagine that you live in a shack in Canada. It's getting really, really cold, so you decide that you're gonna build a fire with as much wood as you can possibly find to stay warm. The fire is obviously a number one priority because you know that if it gets too cold that you can die, so building the fire will then alleviate your issue and help you to warm up and start to feel comfortable. But here's something that you have to consider. If you build the fire too big, it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter until your comfort level has exceeded and now it's too dangerous to live in that shack. And if that were to happen, if you built the fire too big by accident, I'm sure that you'd wish that you hadn't built the fire that big in the first place. Once the fire has started, there's not much you can do to stop it. Long after you've stopped piling the wood on top, the shack is still gonna be really hot. So unfortunately, due to a ton of different things that people have been doing for years and years. This didn't just start. I mean, this has been years and years and years and years and years and years. I can't express to you how many years. People have caused the planet to become warmer and warmer and warmer. And it's not something that's noticeable enough to see it occurring second by second. In fact, since 1900, the planet has only warmed up about 1.5 degrees or so. However, by the year 2100, global warming will have increased the Earth's overall temperature anywhere between three and nine degrees. Right now, as it stands, there's a 75% chance that the temperature will increase between three and five degrees. There's a 50% chance that it will increase between six and nine degrees. Now that might not sound like much, but to put it in perspective, when we came out of the last ice age, the planet warmed up by five degrees over 5,000 years. Climate change is threatening to increase the temperature by the same amount in less than a century. And once the planet starts to warm, it's almost impossible to stop the process. Now, if you're not sure what global warming is, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. Global warming is the product of greenhouse effect. And we all know what a greenhouse is. It's a place that's really well suited for growing things because it traps the heat inside and it keeps it hotter than the atmosphere outside of it. And the greenhouse effect is not a bad thing in most circumstances. Basically, you can think of Earth's atmosphere as one giant greenhouse. There are gases super high up in our atmosphere, like carbon dioxide and methane, that basically act like a shield against the sun's rays. So some of the sun's rays obviously pass through the greenhouse gas and make their way to Earth. And then to that effect, the warming planet gives off heat energy, which then radiates its way back out to space. Some of that outgoing energy doesn't make its way back out to space, however, because of the greenhouse effect and it makes its way back down to Earth. So effectively, it traps that heat energy and it keeps the Earth about 33 degrees hotter than it normally would be if we didn't have those gases. That is what is called the natural greenhouse effect and it's a really good thing. Without it, Earth would be
would be way too cold to support a lot of the life that we have on it. And I don't just mean people in that regard, I mean plants and animals and things that humans need to live. But then we have something called an enhanced greenhouse effect. Normally the natural greenhouse effect would be nothing to worry about, except for everything kind of changed during the Industrial Revolution. Human beings since then have been using energy in much higher quantities than previous to that. I'm assuming most of us drive a car, and gasoline works with oxygen to create combustion, which releases gases into the air. In fact, the majority of the energy that humans use is made by burning fossil fuels, which releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And all that carbon dioxide that's emitted is just drifting upwards and making that greenhouse gas just a little bit thicker. And that is what we call the enhanced greenhouse effect. And as a result, more of the sun's heat waves get trapped in Earth's atmosphere and causes the planet to warm up more. And although a very small number of people dispute this, a majority of Earth's climate scientists agree that human beings are the cause of these excess carbon dioxide emissions. And according to the International Energy Institute, which I will link down below, this could increase to 90% by the year 2020. Guys, that's three years away. That's really scary. So without drastic actions taken, like solar energy and lots of countries getting on board with that, the amount of carbon dioxide in our Earth's atmosphere is going to increase. Earth will continue to heat up and thus climate change will get worse. A lot of people may not know, but the Earth's weather is entirely powered by the sun. Since Earth rotates on an axis, different parts of the planet are heated different amounts at different times of the year, thus creating seasons and also why some regions are just always consistently hotter than others. Temperature variations between one part of the world and another can cause differences in air pressure and that can lead to extreme wind and storms and hurricanes. And the sun's heat also warms the oceans unevenly, which can cause changes in the ocean's current. There are links between the atmosphere and the oceans that can cause extreme weather patterns like El Nino. And climate change is already starting to happen and be noticeable in certain parts of the world. I mean, if you live in Alaska or Greenland, the idea of the planet warming up probably sounds amazing to you. But climate change doesn't necessarily mean that things are going to get hotter. Some places will be hotter some of the time, but most of the effects are going to come from crazy, erratic, and extreme weather patterns. That can mean heavier rainfall on some occasions, a lot more snow in some places, long, long extended periods of drought, more storms and hurricanes, excessively frequent heat waves. I mean, take it from someone who lives in Florida. Our hurricane season this past year was so... it just doesn't happen. Like, that was, that was new. The drought that California experienced, the snowstorms that are occurring right now, is. And I do, do want to mention this because I don't want people to think that this is just a video of me preaching global warming at you. While the vast majority of scientists definitely believe in global warming and climate change, there are a small number of scientists who don't. Most scientists are in agreement that the Earth is warming, but a small number do not believe that fossil fuel and human carbon dioxide emissions are the cause for the warming. And then there are climate change skeptics altogether who do not believe that the Earth is warming whatsoever, or if it is warming, they believe it's caused by just normal patterns that have been seen in the past. And people could still be wrong about global warming, but honestly, it's becoming extremely more and more unlikely that they are wrong. If you know it's rained every single Wednesday for the past seven years, you might assume that it's gonna rain this Wednesday because the pattern says so. Essentially what I'm trying to say is that you're using data from the past to kind of figure out the future. And obviously scientists are able to make these forecasts using complex computer systems with models, which is essentially a collection of math equations that I could never dream to understand that explain the Earth's climate. And like most equations, there are variables that are taken into account, like temperature and rainfall and the amount of carbon dioxide emitted in areas or overall, sea level, high tide, low tide, all that jazz. So taking all of these variables and plugging them into an equation it gives scientists an overall idea of how the climate works. And I'm sure you're wondering, and I ask too, how are scientists sure of this information? Now, there are a ton of articles on this online, so if you don't want to take my word for it, please definitely look this up on your own. But there is a process called calibrating the model. You start the model with data from 1900 and then ask it to run 50 years in the future. 
it should tell you what the weather was like in 1950. And then obviously they can compare the predictions of the model with actual documented data from 1950. And if that lined up properly and made an accurate prediction, then they can then run the model even further into the future and assume that those results will be similar to the calibrations that they got from running it in the past. And another reason people are skeptical is because they assume that the computer models cannot accurately represent or predict what the weather could be like in the future. They assume that the computer models are too simple and cannot actually predict what will occur in our atmosphere and in the climate. However, as time goes on, climate scientists have more and more data to work with, and computers are becoming more and more powerful. Ultimately, the models are getting better. Humans, of course, are animals too, and I think a lot of times people forget that we are actually part of the global ecosystem. So what can be expected from future climate change and global warming? There are going to be more erratic weather patterns that will lead to more storm damage and a lot of people losing their homes along the coast because of coastal flooding. Pests and mosquitoes and diseases are definitely going to spread with more global warming because these things thrive on heat and wet areas. If the earth continues to heat up at the rate that it is currently at, by 2100, malaria is expected to spread much more widely and will affect two thirds of the population. To reduce the impact of climate change, we have to reduce global warming. There are very simple things that you as an individual can do to reduce your carbon dioxide emissions. You can replace all the bulbs in your house with energy saving bulbs. You can cut back on the amount of red meat that you eat because cows emit so much carbon dioxide. I'll leave a link down below. It's insane. You can try to switch your utility company to a company that uses more renewable and solar energy. Or you can bike, walk, or take the bus from time to time instead of using your car. If you're cold at home, put on a sweater instead of turning on the heat. Open your windows if it's nice outside instead of using your air conditioning. If you have the ability, get a car that's more fuel efficient or that is battery powered. These things are easy to do as an individual and they make a difference immediately. And while it's easy for us as individuals to make that difference, it's much harder for governments to change over to renewable energy. One of the reasons is that government and businesses feel like attempting to reduce your carbon dioxide emissions will ultimately lead in less energy used and a lack of economic growth. So if one country decides to clean up their act and switch over to more energy efficient and solar powered renewable energy sources, they may fear that they would find themselves at an economic disadvantage. And all of the time spent between these nations arguing what they're gonna do, global warming is just getting worse. The longer it takes to reach an agreement, the worse things are gonna get. So ultimately the bottom line is that there is a lack of urgency and unfortunately things don't stop while we're trying to make a decision. So as an individual, we have to do what we can to make changes in our lives and the lives of others around us because it's not a joke and things are changing stuff is happening and right now individuals are the ones that have to fix it. I hope you guys learned something from this video and if you watched the entire way through, kudos to you and thank you for giving me your time and letting me just try to educate you. And this video is not meant to attack anyone, it's just simply for education. I just want people to be aware that, yeah, okay, you might not believe in it because someone told you it's not real, but you do your research and make your own informed decision, you might just realize that the world is much more complex and the actions that we do and the actions that countries and businesses take do have effects. I just hope you guys learned something from this. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If this is the first video that you're seeing of mine, hi, I'm Kaylee. You should subscribe by hitting that red button right down below and we can become best friends forever. Links to my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram are also down below. I'll see you guys in a few days with another video. Bye everyone.